Welcome to the Sunday Brunch with Ben and Ned. I am Ned. Ben could not make it today. Bless you, Ben. And uh, my good friend Lauren Williams is here today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. All right. And uh, so on Facebook, please find and like the Sunday Brunch with Ben and Ned. And you can always leave comments there about what you're watching now, about stuff you've seen already, or about stuff you would like to see in the future. Lauren, I asked you to be on the show and uh, came up with the topic of the conscious football fans dilemma. I am going to throw this, I'm going to pass this one right to you and say, if you could just kind of describe what that means. What is the dilemma? Well, football is um, America's favorite sport right now, but it, it is violent and people get hurt and so um, a lot of people who enjoy that also consider themselves, you know, spiritual seekers, and and so I thought I'm not the only one in this in this boat. So let's talk about it. And it's true. Other people, I've since we introduced this topic, have said that should be an interesting topic. And it's true. Uh, we have lots of spiritual people we consider ourselves on a spiritual journey into meditation, into prayer, into practices, and conscientiousness about peace and yet uh, many of those same people are into sports I'm not really into sports so much myself uh, this isn't even my my jersey uh, this was delightfully and uh, generously lent um, by your husband James and thanks for letting us do the show here today James off camera thanks brother uh, this is 88 Gonzalez of the Chiefs He's, he's the best. No, 24, 25 is the best. Um, Jamal Charles, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he is, is the best. It needs bigger. Um, so, so many of these people that we're talking about who consider themselves on a spiritual path um, are into sports like football or other you know, potentially violent or combative sports, boxing. Somebody asked me at, at work the other day, or do I like mixed martial arts? <laughs> and, and I had to, I, I was really confused. And it's a person I consider a spiritual person. He, he prays a lot. I pray a lot. And I didn't even, what do you mean, do I like mixed martial arts? Oh, like watching it and the sport and all that. And it's just such a foreign thing to me now. But it, it, I can see how it could be a conflict um, along, along those lines. Another thing that is in that category um, I think, it, are violent movies, um, absolutely. which is a, you know, a huge part of our world. And I think that stunt people, you know, stunt men and women that um, do the, all the dangerous things, they probably get injured too. Oh, and, sure. But it's the same thing as football players where we just say, Excuse you know me. what, you, you're paid for this, you're an adult, you assume the risks. Um, I think that's kind of what you know, the agreement that we're comfortable with sure. in, in this society, I guess, but it's worth looking at if it's a big part of my life being a football fan. Now, um, what was, eventually we're going to uh, come to some conclusions and how to possibly resolve that dilemma or seeming conflict, or maybe we won't, you know, this is simply a question out there. Um, we might get around to resolving it, but tell me how you became a football fan? Well, I was I was dating a beautiful man named James Williams, who is in our audience today, and um, we were so busy falling in love that I did I kind of overlooked the fact that he was a football fan. So after we got married and moved to Missouri is when it really became clear, and um, I really resented it. I, it you know, made me angry. I didn't want it to be a part of my life. I didn't know if I could accept it. But I was working at Silent Unity at the time, so I just decided to pray about it. And I asked God to open my heart to what was... Oh, the most simple way to put it is I asked God to open my heart to football wow. and to be able to see everything that was there that people obviously value and enjoy. So, um... I was inspired to learn all, all the rules and, you know, read football for dummies and, 
and um, really started getting into it and really did start to see what was there, why people enjoy it. And um, all, there's a lot of human interest stories too, you know, where pe people that, especially young men, I'll just say, um, since it's pretty much men, sure. uh, young men that, you know, have transformation, transformative experiences, including my husband, who wasn't really on a path to go to college if it hadn't been for football, so... Um, it opens up doors. It opens up uh, possibilities. And I would say, conscious, like, unity consciousness in that you, that it's not an individual sport. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that is greater than yourself that you commit to and, um, you know, teamwork is a way of putting it, but it's also could be described as unity. Absolutely. And sports in general, and certainly football, is where many young people, many uh, teenage males, I suppose, especially learn, yeah, uh, discipline, uh, focus, teamwork, harmony, uh, goal setting, you know, drive towards, towards uh, uh, you know, potential, and yeah, focus. So definitely, I mean, sports, it, for me, in growing up as a, in, in my teenage years, for a little while it was sports, um, but then it was martial arts, but that same, that same idea. Speaking of conflict, the potential conflict of uh, loving peace and, lo and being spiritual um, and the idea of combat or violence, I, eventually that, I, that's basically why I, I gave up, I retired from martial arts. That was my career. Mm -hmm. was I just couldn't, uh, and so from the martial arts, learning more about spirituality, that, that opened up the way to being a pacifist, and eventually I couldn't get uh, passionate about what I was teaching any longer. It just didn't work for me. So many people it does. Many people they find a way to be that peaceful warrior, that peaceful I and mean, literal martial artist. Um, so, so because of your your uh, your husband, that opened up the way for football for you. Uh, Love. Your love. love for football. Well, love is what opened the door. Oh. <laughs> for more love, love of football. To yeah, I, I had a choice. I could you know decide to to you know continue to resent it and have it like drive a wedge between me and my husband, or and embrace it. And I really have fully embraced it. Like I really do enjoy it, and I look forward to football season. And, now, likewise, does James love quilting now? As, <laughs> as, as, as we, we can get into that yeah. stuff. Right. Yeah, I still have that card in my back pocket that I can use whenever I need to. Like, remember that I became a football fan? <laughs> one, of our, uh, one of the comments we got, um, one of the viewers wrote in this question. Um, let's look it up. Talk about the difference between consciousness and conscientiousness. Isn't consciousness... Uh, simply being awake. Uh, well, when when you use that term consciousness, what are you referring to? In to this me, context, to me, conscious and conscientious are pretty much the same thing. I guess to me, that thought, you know, that there's thought behind it. It's not something that sure. I'm going into without considering. Sure. Awake. Uh, on and but not just uh, physically awake, you know, like you got up out of bed, but on a journey of spiritual awakeness, yeah. uh, awareness of the world around us, the universe, the nature of uh, humankind, the nature of divinity. So perhaps on a path, exploring all those things, mm -hmm. and of course, the more one learns about all those things, the less one knows about all those things. So the more conscious we are, the more conscientious we are, the, the more aware we are of the, the questions, of the, of the unknown, of how little we actually do know for sure. I'm bringing this back to the topic, by the way. It's coming back around. So do we know for sure? Do we have a resolution? Do you have solutions to this dilemma? I, it's a living question for me. Really, it is. 
Um, Because just preparing to have this conversation, I brushed up on what people are saying about um, the ethical... um, yeah, kudos to you for bringing this this topic, by the way, to 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 delve into something that is alive for you. That's mm-hmm. great. Because if I really focus on um, the dangers for the players with brain injuries, um, and I mean not just NFL players who are paid handsomely, but <clears throat> college players, and high school players who are can be injured and not compensated for it. I have to weigh that with like the benefits of you know, of the individual benefits of physical fitness and also like the collective benefits of of working together something greater than yourself. It's almost it it reminds me a little bit of like a meat eaters dilemma <laughs> of you know like well I of. Um, if I watch movies about factory farms, you know, if I really dwell and like look into the yeah. problems behind that system, um, it's not it can it, t- it can take a lot of. You don't usually watch one of those documentaries and then on you your go way. out and get it. Yeah. 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 To a barbecue. Um, so yeah, those are some benefits. One, how about this gives an outlet for that aggression that is, if aggression is a natural part of the human experience, maybe sports, not just football, all, all sports, gives a vent, gives an outlet for, for releasing that. That is the closest thing that I've come up with to uh, justification. Both, both in participating in it and, uh, and, and watching it gives an outlet for it. I had never, that, the whole conflict never really even occur, occurred to me. Like, I never, I don't think I ever saw somebody watching football and, and, and then think, well, they think they're an enlightened being. How dare they? I will now. By the way, now that you brought this up, I will, I will bring that judgment into the whole experience from here on. Well, one brief uh, dilemma, one mini dilemma within the big dilemma, is um, that at one point I thought I might be moving to Washington D.C. Uh-huh. and I, I thought, well, I can't become a Redskins fan, uh-huh. and so what. You know, just I any team that names themselves after a skin color, uh-huh. you know, which is not how we. It's not the like, the it's not the framework we use to describe people. It's like, but the color of their skin. Um, so I decided if I if and if I ever move to DC, I'll have to be a Ravens fan. Wow! Wow! And so that's that is a whole nother conflict. <laughs> a whole nother show. Team. Uh, <laughs> The mascots involved mm-hmm. is Chiefs even a, a controversy? Not as bad, not as uh, potentially as Redskins for sure. But. Right, it, that's how I feel about it. I feel like a chief is something to be honored. That's a position. Um, yeah, it's that's an a, honorary a, title. It is something to be upheld, you know, more so than um, Redskins, which is sure, simply it's a, it's a slur. Yeah. It's yeah. A, it's very cool. Well, um, I feel like we've, we've uh, barely tapped the uh, the surface uh, of this of this topic. We'll have to huddle back up um, for this another time. Um, <laughs> what we like to do sometimes at the end of our our show or at the end of a segment is a thing called "What did you learn on the show today?" Um, so. Let's see. Did did uh, you learn anything new on the show today? Yeah, by just by having this conversation, I realized how alive this question is for me. That it's not ongoing. It that it is ongoing, and that other people um, are thinking about it too. I really enjoyed this. Um, me too. I. I, even the topic itself it, it opened up a whole new um, area for me to be judgmental about. So I appreciate that. Yeah, home, that's home. a good opportunity. You don't want to miss. <laughs> a whole new area to um, explore. A whole new area to, to explore. 
Well, uh, this has been the, the Sunday brunch with uh, Lauren and Ned, and uh, we also do this sometime if you want. Uh, peace. Let's say it together. Peace! peace.